Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the final feature match in Yu-Gi-Oh! Overdose's seventh constructed event. But this match pits Elijah Gersten and his uh, Machina gadget deck uh, with, or I guess Goldfish or whatever, I don't know what you want to call it, against uh, David Everett's uh, uh, water build with uh, Jetix Undyne. And I'm joined today by Simon He. Uh, Simon, why don't you start off by saying hello? Hey guys, how's it going? Glad to be back. Uh, so we're looking at this match right now. Tin plate is awesome. Uh, whoa! Do you, do you actually now that now I take back? I don't take back what I said, but uh, I mean tin plate is awesome. It's a great addition to the deck. Uh, it gets searched out by uh, Gigant X or whatever. But also, it's really good. I don't know if he. I don't know if Eli Elijah knows what he's playing against. But a turn one Abyss Dweller that's twenty two hundred is is pretty amazing against Waters. What do you think? It is. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I... So, one way that it, it's very consistent to open uh, the template and the gadget, and it's just, if you can protect the brother as well in 22, it's so clutch. Do you think that he doesn't know what he's playing against, or do you think he just prefers this play? I haven't been following the tournament, so if he... Oh, let's see what this face down is first. If it's something that he can't protect the dweller in, then maybe... Okay, he doesn't know what he's playing against. It's my bet. I'm gonna... I'm gonna de uh, declare phases, please. We had an issue last round with Elijah and... Uh, Timothy Bevue, I think is how you pronounce his name. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. I just came in to uh, catch it, actually. I think that was uh, that was very unsportsman. Like, I mean, right. You know, he obviously he obviously ended he obviously ended before the opponent dropped gold forward. I mean, it was like really fast. Oh no, 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 that's not that. That was just a troll part. That wasn't that wasn't really it. it oh, good. okay. The earlier part was uh, Elijah. Elijah has two back rows, and one of them is Macrocosmos. And he doesn't want to. I think it's kind of obvious, right? Like you don't want to immediately play the macro because he could have an MST, and if he's gonna blind MST, you want him to try to hit the thing that's not macro. Uh, so he's waiting, and uh, see if he drops it. Right, and but and then and then he drops a tooth, and Elijah says, says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, let's let's declare phases," and then he drops a marksman. And he's like, "What?" And then they got into like a big debate about it, and uh, you know, it was just it was just a big deal. And um, I was actually I was actually intending to rule with uh, with Timothy on that against Elijah uh, after I had talked about it with a few people. But uh, I was sending Timothy messages on Dueling Network. He wasn't responding, and he just listened to what the admin said. So I mean, he he got the uh, the shit end of the stick there. Anyway, the point is now they're declaring phases. Yeah, that, that's, good. that's good. Technically, it should be in, it, no matter what, it should be in Elijah's favor. If he did not declare phases or even click on M1, in, the, in right. this case, on, uh, online, well, then... Uh, here's the thing. Um, uh, I'm telling him to declare phases. Uh, if, uh, how do I put this? All right, so this is the thing. I, 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 I don't, I don't like ruling just by the book. I mean, I, I'm a player. I've been playing a long time. If I sense you're trying to take advantage of the rules, I say screw the rules. I'm gonna make sure that you're not taking advantage of, of certain policies. And if this was real life, you know, uh, I would, I'd say, you know, maybe, maybe there's more room there. But like the thing, I literally have timestamps, and I see that. You know, he waited for a minute, and I also see that his last opponent didn't use uh, or didn't declare phases the whole game. That, that would be kind of different, too. Uh, but, right. it, but yeah, yeah. good judges do do that. They take into account like intention and all the right. other things. That happen. So, yeah, of course. Now, I understand. I understand why uh, Elijah wouldn't want to activate that macro right away, but at the same time, I understand why he would summon Tooth without declaring main phase one. And I don't, I don't feel like he should be he should be penalized when I think the burden there is more so on 
Elijah. Elijah could have said, for example, at the beginning of the turn, hey, make sure you declare phases this turn or something like that. But uh, but he didn't. So, uh, I mean, it's whatever. It's in the past. Now, here we are in the finals. Uh, David Everett and Elijah Gersten. David David doesn't live uh, too uh, too far away from me. I'm, I think I know him pretty well. Uh, and uh, Elijah is a regular in these tournaments. So either which way, I'm happy with either of these guys winning. I think uh, the championship has eluded Elijah for a while now. He's kind of known for getting second place. Just by looking at both of the bet lists, I think Elijah does have this. He has he has no issue with guys whatsoever. Um, making guys, I mean, he has a lot of removal after the loads, and he plays three Phoenix chains, which is very good against this matchup. And looking at the uh, David's deck, it's uh, it, I do like the normal bottom dime. Oh, this is not okay. Oh, oh, never mind. He's playing two tiers. Ah, with one of those. And on next. Okay, so he's playing a mixed match deck, water deck. Uh, but he's not playing anything like um Phoenix chains or. Uh, yeah, he's not playing Phoenix Chains, which I really would like to, which I really do, do like in, if you play Condyne, because you can make really good DeLorean plays with the, uh, with the deck. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Well, yeah, uh, just by looking at both the decks, it, it just seems that uh, Elijah has a very strong matchup. Well, I, I, I agree that I think, I, I really feel like uh, Gadgets, maybe, I don't know how I feel about this particular build. I sense that the ratios are kind of custom-tuned, like he's been working, like for example, one gear frame, two Fortress. That's not something you see, or two Double Summon, two Lance, and two Typhoon, and one Duality. These aren't things you see all the time, so I feel like Elijah's been playing this for a while, and he's got a good sense of what's going on. Uh, and I do think that it has a, a good matchup against Waters, primarily because of the tin plate, but... Uh, I mean, for what it's worth, I, Elijah just messaged me. He said he's probably going to lose this game. Uh, but he's also been losing a lot of game ones throughout this tournament. That, we, me and him have had like a, kind of a running joke about it. Uh, but he's also, I mean, he, he took a loss in the last round, but he really just scooped. I mean, he's, he's kind of undefeated right now. So, I mean, he keeps losing game one, but he keeps coming back. That is really strange that I say that. He's running 50 monsters with... Uh, one set. He was running 50 monsters with 14 traps, and now he's just something like and ended with five cards in hand. Uh, so clearly, he doesn't seem to have any sort of protection. I just that's quite unlucky, bro. Well, I mean, just looking at it, it really doesn't look like it's in his favor right now. <laughs> oh, it does not. So let's let's just let's skip the formalities, I guess. Let's take a peek at uh, each of these duelists' side decks, and uh, I mean, what do you think's coming in? For Elijah, obviously the three microcosmos. Good cards. Um, I'm not so sure about the maxis. I don't. I don't think they're entirely necessary. Uh, I think the three Michael Cosmos is what actually do. <laughs> okay. For um, David, the Dosoneros. Uh, I I don't think I would put mine push in here. There, there is no one point. Let me uh, let me actually oh. open up David's list. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, if you if you if some of him play and you know he has that particular gadget and you might push him, I guess it's okay. But then they might have another kind of uh, gadget, so it's not entirely strong. I mean, not for nothing. I I still think I'm looking at the side deck. Aside from maybe the dust tornadoes. Uh, I mean, Minecraft seems like his. The old, like, I'm looking at the the main deck. I'm thinking, okay, what's weak against uh, gadgets? And mind control. Mind control is definitely one. Um, I don't. He probably wants a side out salvage too. You know, because um, he's got to uh, figure. Yeah, I'll go with this before salvage. If um, if I if I can't think of it, if there's nothing else to put in, and uh, and uh, yeah, and you. Don't, you don't have anything else put in, then Avris will go before something generally. Alright, well, even still, like, um, you can cut all three, I think. Yeah, of course. 
Um, and uh, I mean, I mean, there's some slots right there of just cards that are weak, especially against macro. Um, unless you're, I guess I don't know, I don't know exactly how this would play out. Uh, I would actually decide to snow money into at least one actually if I was uh, if I was David because uh, the, the deck will make Dweller pretty easily. Right, that is a good so, point. That is a very good point. It's very difficult to kill the brother while he's got that many back rows and potentially something else uh, going on. Up. Hey, wait so, a second. Have yeah. you been watching this game? I have. Well, I've been flicking back and forth about this. What just happened? Uh, Avarice into Tim played into... He, uh, Elijah, had, I don't understand why he thinks he's going to lose. He, has, he had so many cards in hand and so many ways to go to Gaios. He has so much protection. Uh, this game is far from over. Oh wait, fourteen hundred life point. Okay, never mind. I mean, that's I, I, the I was looking at the deck list right now, but the last time I looked, he was at fourteen hundred. I think like he only had a couple cards, and okay, now it looks like he's in an okay spot. Like he's just one D prison away from, and maybe like a fiendish chain away from uh, mm. changing the game. But I, I don't. Maybe his back rows are just completely trash and. He's about to get blown out of the water. It does need to be this chain. It definitely does need to be some sort of this chain because uh, right. even if they if they get into the Gaios, they, they could be some sort of Megalo play or TS play with a marksman going on from David. Yep, and yep. that's going to happen. Absolutely. I hate it every time I play against Waters and they activate Pot of Avarice. You know that it, if it, if it ever gets to the point where they can resolve a pot of avarice, that you're probably already losing that game. <laughs> and it's like, bro, you didn't even need to draw that card. You could literally just put that card in your graveyard and still win this game. To try and convince the makers. Yeah. I don't know if I, uh, or I, I I I haven't told you. Ah, uh, well, that's game. Uh, I played this weekend at the at the two different locals on Friday and Saturday, and. Uh, I was on the bubble because uh, I took a loss yesterday, and some guy saw that he was playing me. He just scooped. Wow! He just that he, much of uh, intimidation, that much of a presence you've going on there. It was I don't know it, I don't think it had anything to do with my presence. I think it had to do with like I'm sick and tired of because I played him the day before at a different locals, and he's like I don't want to play you. It's like too many mind games. It's just way too stressful. Like I'll just scoop. And it was too funny. I don't know why that I thought about that. I was thinking about something right now. I didn't mean to just bring that up. Uh, I mean, he was playing gadgets, but there was a different point to that. My bad. That sounded way too cocky. Uh, well, anyway, I. Anyway, more more to the. No, I forget. I, there was there was a point to that. There was something going on in this match with intimidation or something that I was thinking about, and then I wanted to draw. I just wanted to relate it to my own personal experience, but I forgot what it was. So I mean, it's whatever now. Anyway, sure. Um, so, all right. So, oh, what I want to say, with, all right. At some point, I wanted to talk about this. I'm looking at Dave's deck, and uh, so I mean, he puts in controllers, which I think is a nod to expecting some evil swarms. Evil swarms aren't aren't as big as they were in our last tournament when they just came out, and I think they're kind of settling into this role of. You know, just being like one of those decks in the format, but definitely not one of those popular decks. Um, but either way, you know, he, here he is with the Gen Xs and stuff. But he only runs two Magalas and two Tuses, Abyss two, uh, Tuses or whatever. And uh, I want to know, Tius, or, 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 whatever. I, anyway, what do you think about that? Do you think like that we're looking at like a blend of this stuff going forward, or do you think that? This is just the yeah, wrong way to... I think the guy who won in, in France just used, like, a 50-something card. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I lost top eight, actually. He was, uh... It was kind of like this, but more cards and the full on mon mono level with Undines and Mother Glacier and lots and lots of traps. Um, it, it gives... It does give... The, this is the one of the only decks in the entire video history, or probably ever will be, that you can run more than four, one, like 50 cards and still do well because everything searches everything so it isn't there's no one card you really need in the opening hand it's not like most other days so it doesn't really matter he the, the concept is just basically how 
ridiculous amounts of options. You have um, the normal mono stuff going on. You can go really, really fast. And then uh, with Genex, you can make Dweller. And if, if, if your own CK if it doesn't work, then you just bounce everything back. Um, Mullen is amazing in the mirror match. But obviously, in, in the mono, it actually doesn't test that well at all. Without Undyne, it Mullen just comes dead so... Your Dragoons are so valuable, you need them for Mega Man most of the time. So, right. uh, well, yes, to answer your question, yeah, the, this trend is, I think it's very good. I think it's very good. The, the mix of Undyne and Mono. I'm reading the Watchers chat. I feel so good right now. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Please don't. Elijah, Elijah's like, um, don't tell me he's gonna do the, the whole phase thing again. I don't so think so. Down. He was he in main phase the whole. Yeah. I... Okay. No, he's not. That's disgusting. That is quite disgusting. That <laughs> just is really. Gadget is, is such a controlled deck, but with the template, it gets really fast. And with yeah, with the double summon and the template, it becomes quite fast. And you can, if you, if Gadget is behind and they're facing down a bunch of big monsters, it, it's difficult for them to come back unless they put into a mirror force or something sure. But now with template, it should be easier. But that isn't the, in theory it should be easy, but that isn't the case here. The, the normal player is just going in on him from both games, just going from really aggro. Right. And it doesn't seem like you can come back with anything. Like, it doesn't seem like the traps are doing much at all because of Marsman. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I'm thinking like... So, I mean, I played uh, in my locals in the 10 matches that I played, which, you know, is great or whatever. Three of them were gadgets. And I brought this up in the top eight commentary uh, where I said, you know, that I think that's going to be relevant going forward because, I mean, I live in Jersey, right? Like the, the YCS is in my backyard. It's like five minutes away from my house. And there are a lot of people here who uh, never went out and bought waters. They pay and they they settled for Firefist and and in the Philadelphia area, area, area too they settled for Firefist because it was cheaper and easier to play, and uh, there were also people who are for example uh, just uh, picking picking the game back up for this one event because it's in our neighborhood and gadgets is a real viable option to them because one they understand it and two uh, it's really cheap and easy to play and uh, exactly. So I mean, I, I I think that we're gonna see some more of it, uh, or see you know a decent number of it at the YCS. And uh, uh, my my thing about it when I, like I is that uh, my my thing against it. Sorry, is uh, I don't like the strategy. I like I I like it's the tin plate's great. Uh, the abyss dweller turn one is great. Uh, the gigant X. Like you constantly have a twenty three hundred that's gonna come on board and attack you. Like that's not a bad thing. Wow, that's that's uh -huh. that's amazing. Uh, but it, the the point was that it's really basic and it's very prone to bad hands. Like your 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 strategy. Yes. Yeah, and I I don't like that so much. That's uh, it's not like waters where your bad hands can turn miraculously good with a good draw. Uh, you have three gadgets. That's never going to get good. It does seem like this is probably one of the best control decks there are. You're talking about gadgets? Anyway. Um, but it, it does seem like the format has become so fast that with mono and with level in general going on, no amount of control deck can handle it. Not macro rabbit, not this. It doesn't matter how many macros and defuses they have, they just find a way around it. Right. It's just so fast, it just always on the control deck is always under pressure. And yeah, that's actually quite interesting that you mentioned this uh, few... Oh, God. Wow, that was huge. <laughs> is it? Is that match right yeah, now? Um, this is game three? Yeah, not to know. That would be too we can't stop this. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's it's quite interesting that you mentioned the gadgets in your local... Was Hidden Arsenal legal? Yes. Ah, right. Okay, so in France this weekend, uh, and in day one, the last two rounds I played were 
for gadgets, and him last night wasn't legal. I was really surprised at that. That's awkward. So I, I actually didn't realize this trend was picking up. So I, I caught, I was kind of blindsided, blindsided. I don't think Elijah has a way back. That's it. He, 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 no, he certainly, he certainly doesn't. It's too so far down. He, he's not gadgets. In this situation, it's not one of those that we kind of top out of it. Yeah. This match. Wow. Wow. Very swift. Very. That's his first loss of the tourney. Uh, well, that was a. That was a Yu-Gi-Oh match. Uh, listen, David Everett. I, I love that guy. I am so happy for that guy right now. Uh, you, let me say right now, congratulations, David Everett, for winning Yu Gi Oh Overdose's seventh constructed event. Uh, that's yeah. I mean, it, it kind of sucks that you know Waters uh, won again. It's kind of cool though that it's we now have like a Gen X uh, mono build to kind of work off of. But uh, I mean, whatever. I mean, it, it is what it is. I'm just happy for. Uh, I'm happy for David at this point. Do you have any closing thoughts before we wrap this up? Yeah, well, the search for the deck to beat one of those levels of generals continues. Still, yeah. You know, this has gone on far too long. It's going to end soon. It will, in fact, end soon uh, in a very spectacular fashion. But uh, and then uh, oh, oh god, and then we'll find out that somehow a new build with the with the whip with the was a dragon with a ticket absolutely amazing oh that's right the the yeah. title guy right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway uh so i'm gonna wrap this up uh simon listen I, I appreciated having you i always love having you and i'd love to have you back anytime so uh thanks for for doing this and uh i'll talk to you soon always a pleasure Chris. see you take care